Mike Owens here, joined today by Jordan Vucenic, who went international on Saturday night with his UFC debut against Guram Kutasaladze. Jordan, how are things, my man? Yeah, all good. All good. Life can't be bad when you're munching on an Oreo biscuit. How is, is that your kind of po- first post-fight celebration? Hey, this was two fights back-to-back, man. I, uh, I ate a bit of cake after the first fight. Probably proved the proof not to be the right idea in the second, but fuck it. Um, you've had a couple of days. I'm sure you probably watched the fight back. How were your emotions ahead of uh, after your UFC debut? It wasn't a hard loss as I would have thought because look, I come in with a lot of odds against me. You know, even looking at even looking at everything that was written online, ah, oh, Jordan's too small. He's gonna get smashed. He's got no striking. Blah 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 blah. Well, evidently, I proved I wasn't too small. I proved that I do have some striking, and I proved that I can hang with some of the best in the world. I want to bring you back to a picture that you posted, and it was the first picture you posted after the Paul Hughes fight, and. You know the you know the photo, you know the one I'm on about. And the last yep. the last line on that photo, I will be a UFC fighter one day. Twenty eight yep. and a half thousand likes that photo got me. So how does it feel to finally say you were in the UFC and to prove those that your supporters Amazing. right, maybe the doubt is wrong? Amazing. I still keep just giggling to myself now that I'm in the UFC. Like I've just walked out the shop there, bought myself an Oreo ice cream bar and some M&M's and I just giggled because I've seen my shoes I've got the UFC sliders on and I just giggled thinking isn't it funny I'm going to meet The Rock and all that so I just giggled about it There was a there was a clip you put out where you said Daniel Cormier told you that you shouldn't take it all in Did were you able to take it all in? Yeah I was loving it I said to him I said to him look I said I'm quite my walkout is notorious because I take it all in I really take my time and I try to look at the faces in the crowd and and he said, can I just act, can I give you a word of advice being somebody that's like been there and done it? And I said, yeah, of course you can. He said, try not to take it all in. He said, because the moment will become too much for you. If you try to sit back and take it all in and think I'm in the UFC, I'm in the arena, I've got all these um, famous guys around me, it will get to you. And I was looking at him and I was just shaking my head like, and he could, I think he could tell from my face. And I had to fucking... I took. I was lapping it up, mate. I would have took it, it all in and, and then some. Um, even like you see Guram, he's walking out for the fight. He's like ignoring the crowd and out and the cheering him. I'm flapping all the hands and I was just loving it. Mm. I was just. Oh, I just took it all in the whole thing. Even like I'm. I'm laughing because where I'm from, it's not particularly known as a nice place. Like people say it's a shithole. I love where I'm. From, where I'm from, but. Even I'm just giggling because Bruce Buffer's screaming out of Corby, England. I just thought, in my head, I just imagine all the people from Corby like, oh, shit, that's fucking mental. And I just think it is mental. Like, it actually is mad. I've, I've envisioned that for so long, Bruce Buffer screaming Corby, England, and they actually did it. So it was just fucking crazy. Are you the first fighter that Bruce has introduced fighting out of Corby, England, do you think? Oh, 100%. Mm. That's a proud achievement in and of uh, itself, mate. A hundred percent. I mean, we've had some footballers and that from Corby. We've actually had an Olympic gold medalist as well from Corby, but we've never had a US. Look, there's not many UK guys from the UFC, let alone mm. from a random little town in, in it. You know what I mean? We'll get back to the interview in just a second, guys. But first and foremost, I want to tell you about an incredible new offer from our partners over at DraftKings. Right now, if you're a new DraftKings customer, go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and bet $5 on any bet, any bet you like, receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. All you have to do is use our promo code inside fighting. How do you assess the fight? I mean, I know knowing you, you probably will have watched it back multiple times on the plane. How how yeah. have you had how have you digested it? Uh, I'm it's a, it's a loss. It's a sorry, it's a lesson, not a loss so much for me. Um, I'm happy with the performance. Look, I, I fought against Kepa and then I had like, every day, I was eating in a calorie deficit, but I wasn't eating the cleanest of foods. I was eating mm. cake and that every day. Do you know what I mean? And and this are the, these are the things that you, that people don't take into consideration. you got to think. I had, like, a week and a half taper before the Kepa fight, so no intense cardio. Mm. Then I had the Kepa fight. Then I had two weeks from the Kepa fight till that fight with no cardio. So I've technically done three and a half, nearly four weeks with no intense cardio. Could you imagine if you were getting ready for a fight and... 
could you imagine if I was getting ready for a fight and I said to you, oh, I'm going to do a four-week taper before my fight? You'd say to me, you're fucking nuts. Your fitness is going to get shot if you do that. That's basically what I had. So it's like, in the fight where I dropped him, I'm like, oh, go, go, go. And then I had to be in my head when he starts time up. No, no, I'd be a bit reserved because you don't want to bust the nut and then mm. you don't want to be regretting it second and third round. Um, but on a full camp, man, I was, he was getting put to sleep when I dropped him there because I would not have let him tie me up in rubber guards and stuff. I would have just been ripping elbows from the top. Do you know what I mean? But you got to play the cards you dealt and maybe I, did, maybe I did have the best cardio. Maybe I didn't. I just weren't about to risk it and try to bust the nut and it fuck up. I would have rather have lost a very close decision than bust the nut in the first round trying to finish it and get knocked out. Do you know what mm. I mean? Yeah, because the what they did feel like a shift probably somewhere in the middle of the second round when it felt like the momentum was going more towards his way. You, you put that down to to lack of preparation on your end and less of a a skill differential, if you will. Oh, a hundred percent. Look, the first round where we get to see the skills of mm. me and him. You understand? Yeah. Think of the first round. That's when we're both fresh. That's when it's just skills come into play with it. Um, and you and you can see. I'm ready to hang with anybody. I'm telling you, like I'm telling you now, I'm gonna be a champion in the UFC. I'm telling you now. Look, mate. There's there's ways to lose. I suppose. I mean, there's there's better ways to lose. There's worse ways to lose. I feel like to take a round off a guy who's one of the most highly touted prospects, a weight up where you've not done most of your best work. It's a pretty good uh-huh. way to lose and take a round off and put it. And it, what's also sounds positive, mate, is. is it feels like you're cutting yourself a little bit of slack. Some people would come on here and go, you know, I'm still disappointed. It feels like you're giving yourself just enough of of a little bit of a, a little cutting yourself some slack whilst also yeah. Uh, like I, I know I could I know I could have done more. I know I could be better. It's just made me realise like I'm fucking doing the right things, man. And trust me, I think I've put a lot of people on notice. I think the next fight. Look, I'm staying at lightweight from now on because I was cutting massive amounts of weights and. Getting to the UFC, speaking to the UFC guys and asking them what they're cutting, I'm thinking, oh, look, I was in the sauna with um, Sandhagen mm. and I'm talking to him and I says, oh, how much you got to cut? And he says, oh, six. And I goes to him, kilos. He goes, nah. It looked like I'm a nutter. Nah, man, six pounds. I'm like, yeah. I just said to him, you know, I used to cut 10 kilos for featherweight and water. Mm. Yeah. And he looked at me and he was with his teammate. It was just me in there. They both looked at me as if to say, whatever, like you chant shit. And the funny thing is, I was just thinking to myself, not a joke. Like I literally, when I fought for Ranty, I cut 10 kilos in water in one day. And the last, the next two fights after that, I cut eight kilos both times. So you got to think, that these are at the highest level of the sport. They're cutting six pounds. What is that I'm cutting in pounds? Over 16, like 18 pounds I was cutting. These guys are cutting six. I just realized, look, everybody said, everybody ripped me off on the thing, Guram's going to be far too big for Vachenik. Did I look like Guram was too big for me? No. If anything, I was the bigger guy out of me and him. He was just obviously more ripped up than me, but trust me, mate, watch when you see me go back in there the next time at Lightweight. I'm going to be fucking shredded at Lightweight, and people are getting put to sleep, mate. I'm telling you that I just feel different at that weight. Look, you fought the best that the Cage Warriors had to offer. You fought Charrier, you fought Hughes, you fought Henson. Yeah. How skill wise, how did Garam compare to the other guys that you fought? Well, look, I can't. Sorry, someone's trying still to. Still there. Me. You're all good. You're still there. Okay. Well, am I still the right way to you? No, no, you're right. flipped. There we go. We're all good. Right. I can't judge it because basically, there's no difference. The Hughes's and the Charriers are up there, their UFC level. There's no difference. This one, I didn't fight Guru I think there was a big step up. Did you see me drop Hughes? Did you see me drop Charrier? Mm. Or did you see me drop Guru You understand what I'm saying? There's no, there's no um, difference. I mean, I think sometimes I laugh, I chuckle to myself because when I was in there cracking him with shots, I actually initially thought, hmm, am I hitting him with these shots? Is he letting me, is he like playing possum a little bit with these shots? because well, I feel like I'm hitting him a little bit too easy than, I th- than it should be. And then when I binged him in the right hand and dropped him, I was like, nah, I'm fucking hitting him with these shots. This guy can't see these shots coming. You can hear my corner team too fast, too skilled, but um, the eight days notice just obviously it got to me. So it's just one of them things. And I just made dumb decisions. Look, if I didn't try to jump on his back being a dumbass, then I probably would have won the fight, but I did. I tried to jump on his back and I was a fucking idiot. When I... 
he and he just had very creative moments when I was shaking him off. In my head, I was literally like, right, I'm going to shake him off and I'm going to stay on top for the rest of this round and I'm going to win this fight. And then he kicks off the fence. Just in the moment, just did a moment of madness, kicked off the fence. And I respect that because you've got to do some pretty fucked up shit when you're in there. And this is like, I think this, what I'm going to say now, is going to be like a snippet. I've said it to a few people. It's going to be a snippet. And people are going to probably think, well, that's a bit mental. I'm almost happy I lost. And I'll tell you as for why. Because if I would have beat Guram, his career would have been over and mine would have just begun. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it was probably the last part in his UFC contract. But because Guram won and I lost, my, my journey now just starts with the UFC. His journey gets a second chance. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's not one career finishing, one starting. It's two careers getting another chance. So that's just a nice person in me, though. I'm happy. Most people would think, fuck him, man. I'll, I'll shoot with a one and he could have fucking got cut. But I'm not like that. Like, I'm, um, I'm happy for him as well. Well, credit to you for taking that attitude, mate, because a lot of people wouldn't, as you say. Um, as we yeah. move from kind of present into future, you are a UFC fighter. I'm sure that there's a lot of interest in fights at 155 in the in the big leagues. What interests you? Yeah. Is there a particular name that you would like to fight? And what, what's an ideal timeline for your return? There's, 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 no, there's no particular name. I want to fight the best in the world, though. I know obviously I'm not going to jump up and fight best in the world right off the bat, but I just can't wait till I'm up there fighting with the best guys in the world. I can't wait until I'm fighting with the Poiriers and the Gaethje's and the Holloways. Like, I'm so, I'm just excited for that. Like, it's just Is there like a dream wild, fight but... at 155 then, George? Is the one fight you look at and go, when the timing's right, that's the one that I want? Do you want me to... I'll tell you what's pretty funny. I, there's not a dream fight at 155 because for the last 10 years, I've not looked at 155ers. I've looked at 145ers, but it's just been the right time to move up to 155. I really need to study in that division. Um, yeah, I really need to study in the division, but there's not an actual dream fight as of now. I can't I can't picture anybody. Like I know it sounds mad, but I want to see Poirier's and I want to see Gaethje's in real life because I want to judge how big they actually are because I can't imagine them. You always imagine them as these big guys, but Guram seems to be one of the bigger, scarier guys in the division, and he wasn't that big. Even when I was in front of him, I was looking at him. Even when we first met him, my coaches were like, oh, shit, man, he's well not. you got to think, on the tail of the tape, it said I was 5 for 8, and it said he was 5 for 11. Mm-hmm. I don't know who the fuck said I was 5 for 8. Jesus. But even on the tail of the tape as well, they said I'm 5'10 and a half, and he's 5'11, but you can clearly see I'm taller than him as well. Mm-hmm. So either he's lying or I'm lying. Someone's got, getting their measurements wrong somewhere along the lines. Um, I know that you were in Manchester. You were kind of waiting on the sidelines in case, in case something happened. You could fill in. That obviously didn't take place. But who impressed you on the the all the all UK uh, celebration at UFC three or four? My boy Oban Elliott, man, that fair fucking play to that guy. He's been written off loads, and uh, he's always fucking he's always done the job, and I respect that about him. To be fair, um, and he he always messages me, always. We're always planning on training, but it's just he lives in Wales. I live in the UK. It's um, mm. but Oban oh, Elliott, man, I'm happy with him. He's one of the good guys of the sport. I know he's the bad guy, but he's one of the good guys. When people like him win, it, it makes my heart happy. Couldn't agree more, mate. What a great shout! And talking about nice guys and talking about guys who prove themselves, prove prove people wrong. I want to bring you back to that point, mate, because you know there was people who wrote you off, George. If we can be honest, we can have an honest conversation. There was people who wrote you off. How does it feel to 100%. prove yourself right? I just knew, I always knew, I, it's mad, I was more nervous for Cage Warriors fights than I was for that UFC fight, genuinely hand on heart, mm. waiting, because uh, I even thought at the moment, how fucked up is this, but I, I always knew it was going to come, it wasn't as mind-blowing as I thought it was going to be, because I always knew it was going to come, um, it's just been such a fucking whirlwind of emotional, like I said, I just keep giggling to myself, thinking it's so funny, like, I've literally, look, I'll fucking get them on now, look, I'm, I've got my little <laughs> UFC sliders on now. I just think it's funny, man. Hey, and do you want me to give you a fucking um, a world exclusive? There's go only on. a couple of people that know this right now. Watch this. Go on. There we go. Yeah, and I, I need to get tattooed, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> ciao, ciao. I expected that, mate. I expected some because Alex Pereira has the UFC belt on one bicep, so I thought no one yeah, on George likes his tats. Yeah, I thought it's got to fucking be done, man. I fucking and I got that with pride, man. Because the funny thing is, I've got tattooed that much time. I fucking really don't look forward to getting tattoos. I was looking forward to getting that, and when I got it, I was just thinking, yeah, it looks a bit swollen now because it's literally just been done. So it might be a bit warped, but 
I'm proud to be to to have got to where I've got to. It's been like a since a 14 year old boy I wanted to be in the UFC. Since since a 17 year old going on 18, I've really dedicated my life to trying to be it. It's not been like a like a, a dream that oh I want to be a footballer when I'm older, and you never ever train football. Like since 17 going on 18, I've trained every single day religiously. I've not gone on lads' holidays. I've not drunk. I've not smoked. I've not done all of these things. I've genuinely devoted my my life to to it so to finally get it it's like yeah it's just one of them things like yeah I'm not saying not because I, 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 I don't mean that to say I'm, i've done it now no matter what happens mm. to me i could lose all four and I, I i know where i'm gonna go in this sport but i've done the first major goal of getting there do you know what i mean yeah couple more from me george because you were the cage warriors featherweight champion and this weekend we saw the massive featherweight title fight box between Ilya Taporia and max holloway so i couldn't get you on the show today without chatting to you about that fight since we mightn't catch up until it happens how do you see that one going yeah. down and who's your uh, who's your pick for uh, ufc 308 oh you know what the poor is looking untouchable at the minute, but then you've got to go off some of these runs. Holloway's gone off. You don't know if it's just styles make fights, and this could be one of those triangle things where Taporia beats Volkanovski. Volkanovski always beats Holloway, but Holloway always beats Taporia. If I, if that happened, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I just think, I don't know how tall Taporia actually is, but Holloway's just that long frame, and he knows how to use it well. I just think... Volkanovski had the blueprint to beat him, but I don't know. I, I'm going to go with Holloway, I think. I'm going to go with the OG in Holloway. And that's no disrespect to Taporia, because I think he's amazing. But I just think Taporia's got that... Uh, sorry, Holloway's got that... I don't know. He's just got that drive to get it. Look, he's lost against uh, Volkanovski, what, three times now? A lot of people would have give up the fight. Look at him, what he just did to Justin Gaethje. So you can't ever write that man off, man, them mental Hawaiians, man. I think... Holloway's going to get it done, but it's not going to surprise me if that belt's going to keep changing hands for the next couple of years continuously. Yeah. Well, last one from me, mate. We're at the start of August 2024. Where is Jordan Vucena come the 1st of August 2025? What are your goals? Now you're in the UFC. Now you've made now you've made a big achievement in your journey. What are the goals for next year? I'm going to be on a tear in the UFC, and I'm going to be having people tout me as the next big thing. That's where I'm going to be. Even though I'm eating peanut M Ms right now, but that's fine. I did two fights back to back. Even that's another thing. People, that's two fights, two weight cuts. You, people forgetting that. Mm. That's that taper. That's two weight cuts back to back. Um, yeah, people are forgetting that. That's me performing off, off a weight cut and a week and a fight the week before. Mm. And um, yeah, be um, all I would say is be prepared for a lot of knockouts coming at lightweight. I love it, mate. I love it. Well, look, mate, it was great to see the news last Saturday that to, to air that you were in. It's been great seeing all the content you put out this week and obviously seeing your fight on Saturday night, mate. And it's also been nice to see the support that you've got from the UK and also from international fans because it has been long overdue. So I know you didn't get the win, but keep your head held up high because you know, it was a fantastic performance and a great start to your UFC career. And I look forward to the next wow. one, my friend. Oh, thank you, mate.